now let's see how to uh, load a transaction data and uh, for that we have uh, lo uh, created uh, info providers yesterday one for infocube and one is a dso and here in this info providers we haven't loaded anything there is no data flow in this info providers if you want to see the data flow you have to right click and see sh and click the show data flow it will show the data flow it uh, has so this is the data flow of a uh, info provider i mean there is a psa here and uh, there is a hierarchy is loaded for this and uh, it is it is deactivated you can see all the data flow available for each info provider like this right from the source system to the target so you have to go to the info provider any info provider right click on that and click show data flow here we haven't created anything for this so there is nothing beha below this one for the data flow so that is the procedure to see data flow and uh, there's uh, i mean uh, if you want to see objects involved in that there is a object overview option here you click this so you will know what are the objects involved in this I mean uh, in the uh, in building this info cube in building this info cube there are some characteristics and uh, key figures and all the uh, in date fields uh, what are the date fields we have given everything related to this info cube are shown here so you can see what are the characteristics in in this info cube and uh, time characteristics units and uh, other fields like that everything involved with info cube is shown like that so for that purpose we get you have to right click on the info object uh, on the object and then there is a object overview for the object overview and then uh, there is a data flow show data flow to see the data flow of the uh, info provider so if you click the object overview you will see all the objects involved in creating that uh, uh, info provider if you click on uh, show data flow you will see all the data flow which is uh, beneath that one so we have created a standard dso so far and uh, we can see what are the for example if you if you are told in your office that uh, to create a data flow we have uh, some uh, dso and uh, we need to create uh, data flow the for that and load the data uh, how do you take decision you f you first go to the object overview uh, someone else uh, has created the dso before you and you have to uh, continue th with that work so you see the objects here these are the these are the key figures and these are the characteristics involved in this uh, i mean uh, data in this uh, dso so for this uh, for this structure we have to load the data that is the task now so for that task you have to uh, lo uh, create a flat file if it is a source system you have to directly mm, find the data source for this uh, uh, which provides all those uh, characteristics uh, or else uh, if it is a flat uh, flat file source system we have to see the flat file for example we have this flat file where we have a customer id material number invoice number material cost currency unit material quantity bill amount and then profit profit is empty we have to fill that here the task is we have profit empty and we we have to create a formula and uh, we have while transforming the data we have to fill this profit uh, field in the target right how do you calculate profit means you have a bill amount which is 5000 you have the material cost which is 500 and you have the material quantity that means the vendor and the, uh, the customer has took four quantity of some material uh, material m001 and that material cost 500 so 500 into 4 is 2000 
so bill amount total bill amount is 5000 what is our profit here 3000 so it has to be displayed here so for this purpose we have a, a flat file right so what we will do is to create a, I mean we will create a structure for that and we will create the uh, we will get the data for that so you go and you can change the data for uh, you can change this for example uh, we have a key field as customer id we have data field for uh, material number and uh, all the uh, other ones so what we will do is to add a new info object for info for invoice invoice number is it invoice number what was that INV number so it is not available here so what we will do is uh, switch the screen So I was giving zero INV, but we, uh, but it is a user defined. It has to be Z INV number. So like this, we have created uh, uh, a structure, uh, and we want to load the data to that. And uh, yesterday, I have, uh, I have. I have discussed about the info providers and while discussing that I have missed few uh, a few of the options and we are going to discuss those options like uh, uh, navigation attributes and uh, indexes record mode so for that uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, names for the uh, tables uh, yesterday we have uh, discussed what is the uh, uh, new table and what is active data table and what is change log table so there are the there are uh, some the, i mean uh, uh, it is not just the name that uh, we discuss about there is a table which is created while we execute while we activate that do uh, system will create t uh, different tables for that so for for those different tables we have to uh, we have naming convention so for that uh, for new data table we have a naming convention like uh, uh, for the sap given dso slash bi0 slash uh, capital a and then uh, the name followed by the name of the dso and followed by the number 40 so for the uh, active data table the naming convention would be slash bi0 slash a capital a followed by the dso name followed by 00, zero. So in uh, for user created ones slash BIC slash A and followed by the name of the DSO and followed by 40 for the new data table and for active data table it is 00. zero. So there is it is important to know the table name uh, because uh, if we want to do the lookup or do any uh, cre uh, create any routine we have to know the table name of the active data table because this is where data resides and in transformation in routine if we want to write any code we have to use this table so there is a field called zero record mode zero record mode is used to uh, store the delta functions which uh, which will be passed by the data source so uh, data source will be passing the uh, delta uh, delta types uh, so there are uh, different data sources delta data sources like abr uh, abr1 uh, like that add like that
so all these uh, different uh, uh, de delta data sources will be passing different uh, i mean uh, data types all those data types will have uh, uh, like uh, you know uh, for uh, uh, all those data types are this you have six types of data types uh, w in zero record mode uh, every record will be stored with the uh, this uh, zero record mode which is one length character uh, length one and uh, it has six types of uh, data types to store for example if uh, if the record is new and it is created newly then uh, you will see n for the uh, zero record mode and if the record is uh, i mean uh, modified then it is a after image so you will see empty uh, space for that and for the before image you will see the uh, x uh, mark for that in uh, zero record mode uh, because uh, it is uh, before the modification and the additive image for summable attributes the record describes the changes so uh, for additive image you will see a as a, a record mode and for deletion you will see d it means uh, when the record is deleted the system will show d for uh, for the deleted record because the key won't be key will be moved so record will not actually be deleted and key will be moved and it will be shown as d so reverse image it acts as, uh, as a before image as well so in data source if you see the settings here you have some settings for standard for dsos you have few settings like this sid generations upon uh, activation you have if you tick if you check this mark the sids will be generated while activating if you uncheck this mark